In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve basic calorimetry problems. So number one, how much heat is required to heat 15 grams of water from 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius? And we're given the specific heat capacity of water. To find out the heat energy that's required to do this, you can use this equation. Q is equal to mc delta t. We're looking for Q, which represents the heat energy absorbed or released. The mass is 15 grams. The specific heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram per Celsius. And the change in temperature, final minus initial, it's 70 minus 20 degrees Celsius. 70 minus 20 is 50. 50 times 4.184 times 15 will give you 3,138 joules. So that's how much energy is required to heat up 15 grams of water from 20 to 70 degrees Celsius. Number two, 293.7 joules of heat is removed from five grams of aluminum, causing the temperature to drop from 85 degrees Celsius to 19 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat capacity of aluminum? So let's use the same formula. Now, what is Q in this problem? Q represents the heat energy in joules, but notice that heat energy is removed. So in this case, Q is negative 293.7. So when heat energy is released, we have an exothermic process, Q is negative. When a substance absorbs heat energy, Q is positive, we have an endothermic process. The mass in this example is five grams. Our goal is to calculate the specific heat capacity of aluminum. The final temperature is 19, and the initial temperature is 85. Keep in mind, delta T is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So now all we got to do is just calculate C. 19 minus 85 is negative 66. And if we multiply that by 5, that's negative 330. So what we have is negative 330 times C, and that's equal to negative 293.7. So C is negative 293.7 divided by negative 330. And so the final answer is 0.89 joules per gram per Celsius. So that's the specific heat capacity of aluminum metal. Number three, 500 joules of heat is added to 25 grams of iron metal at 22 degrees Celsius. Calculate the final temperature of iron metal. Because heat is added, the temperature will go up. So let's start with this equation. Q is equal to MC delta C. So Q is positive 500 this time. The mass is 25 grams. The specific heat capacity is 0.45 joules per gram per Celsius, and delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature, which is 22. So first, let's multiply 25 by 0.45. And so that's 11.25. Next, let's divide both sides by 11.25. So what we have now is 44.44 is equal to the final temperature minus 21. So we need to add 21 to both sides. So therefore, the final temperature is 65.4 degrees Celsius. Number four, 50 grams of an unknown material at 200 degrees Celsius was added to 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the mixture was 41.8 Celsius. What is the specific heat capacity of the unknown material? So let's start with a picture. So imagine if we have a beaker of water currently at 25 degrees Celsius. And so we're gonna place a chunk of material 
inside this container. And so this material is at 200 degrees Celsius. Let's say it's a metal. Heat is going to flow from the metal into the surrounding water molecules. Heat flows from hot to cold. So for the metal or the unknown material, the temperature changes from 200 degrees Celsius to 41.8 degrees Celsius. So heat is flowing out of the metal and therefore Q is negative because it's an exothermic process whenever heat is released. In the case of the water, the temperature increases from 25 degrees Celsius to 41.8 degrees Celsius. So Q is positive. Now we need to set Q of the unknown material equal to Q of the water. The amount of heat energy that's released from the metal is equal to the amount of heat energy that's absorbed by the water, assuming there's no energy loss. Now in order for this equation to be true, we need to put a negative sign on one side of the equation. Otherwise it won't match. Q for the unknown material is negative and Q for the water is positive. Negative 5 doesn't equal positive 5. So we need to introduce a negative sign on either side of the equation to make it work. So now that we have the equation, we can go ahead and solve this heat transfer problem. So on the left side, I'm going to write everything that's associated with the unknown material. And on the right side, I'm going to replace delta T with the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And everything related to water is going to be on the right side. Now let's plug in everything that we know. The mass of the unknown material is 50. Our goal is to find a specific heat capacity of that material. The final temperature is 25. The initial temperature of the unknown material is 200. The mass of water is 100. The specific heat capacity of water based on the previous problems that we saw is 4.184. And the final temperature is, wow, it's supposed to be 41.8. So let's fix that. The initial temperature of water is 25. OK, so now everything is good. So on the left, I have 41.8 minus 200. And then take that result, multiply it by negative 50. And so on the left, you should have 7,910 times the specific heat capacity. On the right, 41.8 minus 25 is 16.8. And then multiply that by 4.184 times 100. And so you should get 7,029.12. So divide that number by 79.10, and you should get a value of 0.889. So that's the specific heat capacity of the unknown metal, which is probably aluminum. Let's work on this one. How much heat energy is required to melt 100 grams of ice? and we're given the enthalpy of fusion of ice. So what does the enthalpy of fusion tells us? So what this number means is that one mole of ice requires 6.01 kilojoules of heat energy to melt. So if that's the case, we can use that to calculate how much heat energy is required to melt 100 grams of ice. So starting with 100 grams of ice, which is still H2O, Let's convert that to moles. The molar mass of water is approximately about 18 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16, and hydrogen individually is 1, and there's two hydrogen atoms, so 2 plus 16 is 18. So now we could take the moles and convert it to kilojoules. So one mole of ice requires 6.01 kilojoules of heat energy to melt it. So it's going to be 100 divided by 18 multiplied by 6.01. So the answer is 
0.4 kilojoules of heat. 